Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this final lesson in Week 16 on Chemical Equilibrium. In the last lesson, you learned about the equilibrium constant. You worked out how to, you learned how to calculate it and also what it meant. In this lesson, you're going to be learning how to use the equilibrium constant in a variety of typical chemical equilibrium questions. Grade 12, this is very important, not only for your understanding, but also because it will definitely be in your final exams. <laughs> Grade 12s, it's great to be with you again. This lesson is going to give you more practice in using the equilibrium constant. For the reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia, the equilibrium constant, or Kc, is always the concentration of the product over the concentrations of reactants. But this is only true for a homogeneous reaction, or one in which all the substances are in the same phase. In this homogeneous reaction, all the molecules are gases. Amira and her team are going to show us some of the differences when working with heterogeneous reactions and do some more equilibrium constant practice. A heterogeneous equilibrium contains substances in different states. We only include the concentrations of gases and aqueous solutions. Solids and pure liquids are left out because they have a constant ratio of moles and volume. Here are two examples of reactions with solids and pure liquids. Hydrogen chloride reacts with zinc to form zinc chloride. Notice that we don't put the concentration of the solid zinc into the expression for Kc. And in this example of a reaction with pure liquids, ammonia reacts with water. The water is not in gas form this time, but in liquid form. I have asked Kanye and Rahim to work out the Kc value for some reactions at equilibrium. Let's see how they are getting on. Okay, we have to work out three equilibrium constants. So let's look at the first question. Okay, um, calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction. Hydrogen iodide gas produces hydrogen gas and iodine gas. At equilibrium, the concentration of hydrogen iodide is 0 0,06 mole per decimeter cubed. The concentration of hydrogen is 0 0,03 mole per decimeter cubed and the concentration of iodine is 0, 0,02 mole per decimeter cubed. This means we need to write our expression for Kc first. What was it again? Um, I think we had to put our product concentrations at the top and the reactant concentrations at the bottom. Oh yes, the products are hydrogen and iodine. Yes, um, and the reactant is hydrogen iodide. And don't forget to put the two as the exponent. Okay, that looks good. Now what? Now we can substitute our values. Here, let me try. Okay, okay the concentration of hydrogen is 0, 0,03. The concentration of iodine is 0, 0,02. And the concentration of hydrogen iodide is 0, 0,06. Okay, let's work it out. I've got the calculator here. So... 0, 0,03 times 0, 0,02 divided by 0, 0,06 squared equals, and the answer rounded off is 0, 0,17. 0, 0,17. Are there units for the Kc? No, because the units of the concentration will cancel each other out. Great. One down, two more to go. What's the next question? Okay, let's have a look. Hmm. Okay, question two. Calculate the equilibrium constant of the reaction. Hydrogen reacts with sulfur to produce hydrogen sulfide in a two decimeter cubed container. The number of moles of reactants and products at equilibrium are as follows. 0, 0,5 moles of hydrogen, 0, 0,3 moles of sulfur, and 0, 0,4 moles of hydrogen sulfide. 
Okay, let's write the expression for Casey. Hydrogen sulfide is the product, therefore it goes on top. Hydrogen and sulfur are reactants, therefore they go at the bottom. But sulfur is a solid, so that doesn't go into the expression. Um, now let's substitute. But hold on, we don't have any concentrations, we only have moles. Well, as we have the volume, I suppose we'll just have to work out the concentrations. Right. The formula to work out concentration is concentration is equal to the number of moles divided by volume in decimeters cubed. I'll substitute and work them out. The concentration of hydrogen sulfide equals 0, 0,4 divided by the 2 decimeters cubed. That equals 0, 0,2 moles per decimeter cubed. And the concentration for hydrogen is 0, 0,5 divided by 2 decimeters cubed. That equals 0, 0,25 mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, now we can substitute the concentrations into the equilibrium constant expression. So that is 0, 0,2 divided by 0, 0,25, which equals 0, 0,8. Fantastic, we're on a roll. Let's read the next question. 0, 0,25 moles of nitrogen is added to 0, 0,65 moles of hydrogen in a 2 decimeter cubed container. At equilibrium, there is 0, 0,20 moles of nitrogen. Calculate the equilibrium constant. This one seems really difficult. I don't know where to begin. We've only got one value at equilibrium. <sighs> Amira, can you help us? Of course. Let's have a look together. First, I find it easier to group the information. Then we can highlight the number of moles of reactants in one color and the number of moles at equilibrium in another color. Now, let's put our information into a rice table. We write the balanced equation in our first row of the rice table. In the second row, we put the ratios from our balanced chemical equation. Our third row is our I row. I stands for initial. This means at the start of the reaction. We don't usually have moles of product at the start. Now we can fill in the initial number of moles from the information we were given. 0, 0,25 and 0, 0,65. The fourth row is our C row. C stands for change in moles. This is how many moles reacted or were produced. So let's do that row for now. The next row is the E row. The E stands for equilibrium. This means the number of moles at equilibrium. We can fill in the number of moles of the nitrogen at equilibrium, 0, 0,2, because we have been given this amount. Now, look at the last row. Remember that the square brackets mean concentration. We will need the concentration to work out the equilibrium constant. Now, let's fill in the rest of the table. The number of moles of nitrogen at equilibrium is 0, 0,20. At the start of the reaction, there was 0, 0,25 moles. This must mean that 0, 0,05 moles of nitrogen reacted. Therefore, our change in moles is negative 0, 0,05 moles. To work out the amount of mole of hydrogen that reacted, we need to work with ratio calculations. The trick to remember is to use the given ratios in the table. For this equation, it is 1 is to 3 is to 2. 
So if we start with the negative 0, 05 for the nitrogen, we can calculate the other ratios. The ratio of nitrogen to hydrogen is 1 to 3. How many moles of hydrogen reacted? From the ratio, we know it must be three times the number of moles of nitrogen. We multiply negative 0, 0,05 to get the change in hydrogen, which is negative 0, 0,15. Next, we need to find the change in ammonia. Since ammonia is the product, we use a plus sign in the table. The ratio between nitrogen and ammonia is 1 is to 2. So to find the moles of ammonia formed, we multiply the number of moles of nitrogen used up by 2 to get plus 0, 1. Can you now work out the number of moles of hydrogen there are at equilibrium? Of course, it's 0, 0,65 minus 0, 0,15, which equals 0, 0,50 moles of hydrogen at equilibrium. What about the number of moles of ammonia formed at equilibrium? In this case, we add the moles at the start to the moles formed to get an answer of 0, 0,1 moles of ammonia at equilibrium. Well done. That was tricky. All Kanye and Rahim need to do now is complete the rice table by calculating the concentrations. Then work out the equilibrium constant. I think they can take over from here. Wow, that rice table makes it look so much easier. All we need to work out now is the concentration and the equilibrium constant. Yes, can you remember the formula to work out the concentration? I think it was the number of moles divided by the volume. Yes, I'll write it in the table. It's concentration equals moles divided by volume in moles per decimeter cubed. I'll work them out. The question gave us a volume of 2 decimeters cubed. So the concentration of nitrogen is 0, 0,20 divided by 2. This gives us 0, 0,10. The concentration of hydrogen at equilibrium is 0, 0,50 divided by 2. This equals 0, 0,25. And finally, the concentration of ammonia at equilibrium is 0, 0,10 divided by 2. And we get 0, 0,05. Great. Now we have our concentrations. Let's work out our equilibrium constant. We'll need the balanced equation to write the expression for Kc. Remember that products go at the top and reactants at the bottom. Kc equals concentration of ammonia to the power 2 divided by concentration of nitrogen to the power 1, multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen to the power 3. Great. We just need to substitute these values and then work out the equation. Okay, so from our rice table, the concentration of ammonia is 0, 0,05. And the concentration of nitrogen is 0, 0,10 and the concentration of hydrogen is 0, 0,25. Okay, let's work it out. The equilibrium constant is 1, 6. That's great. Let's do another one. Do another one. Well, you have seen quite a few examples of calculating the equilibrium constant. Before we leave, let's summarize what it means when we have a very high or a very low value for the equilibrium constant. A very high value of equilibrium constant indicates that the forward reaction is almost complete. For example, ozone, O3, breaks up in oxygen very readily.
The equilibrium constant for this reaction is 10 to the power 55. A very low value for the equilibrium constant tells us that the forward reaction does not happen easily and the reactants are very stable. For example, HF does not easily break up. It would be a good idea to try some more, so please look at the chemical equilibrium task video. Also see our website www.mindsearch.co.za forward slash learn for more details on this series. Take care and goodbye for now.